What's up, my fellow Bronies and Pegasus sisters? It's your homeboy, Funky Luffy Hoves, and we are back with another reading of cha of My Little Pony and Human Friendship is Magic. Um, I'm sorry if I haven't been reading that much lately. I've been, <laughs> oh, excuse me, busy with school and other stuff. So, yeah, and also still haven't got any word from Silver Quill. You might be working on it, or you never got it, so if you know how to get my challenge to him, let me know. Uh, send it to him if you can. So, honestly, I forgot what happened last time. Oh, wait, now I remember. It's when Joseph Brooklyn gets gets the whole story of what happened to to Craig and it, to the human... Um, oh, crap, what was the hu other human name? Um... I don't remember. Any of that. Anyway, we are back with another read, fanfic reading, chapter 25. And guys, I only have one, two, three, four, four more chapters until I've completed it all. Four more. Oh, mother of Betsy. What am I going to do now? Sorry, I was just reading to make sure I didn't do a reread of it. <laughs> uh, I think it was chapter 24, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Anyway, um, so if you didn't know what was going on, Joseph Brooklyn gets the whole story of what happened in the past a few years ago. But then, something about the dad still has me curious. He senses something. Something in the forest. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help it. Anyway, I feel like this is an early read for me, but... <laughs> guys, like, 12. I worked last night, so... <clears throat> give me a give me a moment, though, please. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start reading this. Without further ado, let's do this, boy, Ethan, girl. Alright, let's see here. Chapter 25, The Rise of Joseph Brooklyn. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, let's see what goes on now. Equestria unknown. Uh, thunder cracked through the skies. Above Equestria, dark clouds. Ev covering the once glorious blue sky up there. <sighs> oh, excuse me, guys. Whew. Of day and shall cover the stars of the night. This wasn't any any normal weather the equestrians had seen before in a very, very long time. How long exactly? Anyway, they have heard of the weather ponies doing anything to the extent and make things worse for the ears. I think it was supposed to be years. The weather ponies have haven't heard of the weather ponies doing anything to the ex extent and make these words. Oh, oh wait, let me read that. Oh, give me a minute, guys. Oh. The weather ponies, nor unicorns, can't seem to control it. Heavy rain pours all over the land with Thunder strikes occasionally onto different different lands, almost like it was striking peacefully. Specific uh, striking. Okay, certain. I'm just going to say certain places on purpose. The wind blew hard and chillingly through the dense corner. corner of Equestria, tall of this star started to cause the ponies to worry, but can only hope Celestia and Luna can solve the issue. Discord is sitting in custom stone. Of course it's Discord. Why am I not surprised? No, of Equestria, tall of this start to, to cause the ponies to worry, but can only hope Celestia and Luna can solve the issue. Mm. 
Discord is sitting on in custom stone thrown on top of the, the highest mountain that watches over Equestria longingly as if he is <sighs> looking through the land. Memories from hundreds of years ago return like it was yesterday, the days of him battling against Celestia and Luna. If only I hadn't if only I hadn't held back against them, Equestria would have been in my grasp. Celestia Luna, today I will not hold back. I am I am I may be weak than the day than that day, but I'll make you fight for Equestria. Though Discord thought Discord, his balled up fist shaking from anger. But the scowl on Discord's face slowly turned into a menacing granite, and he calmly re relaxes his arms behind his back, chuckling to himself. <laughs> soon, very, very soon, he whispered before disappearing into thin air. Of course he does. The odd-shaped thing teleports himself into the throne room. He had been capturing his power while making plans alongside his mysterious ally, the man or M, who is happened. Oh, I am so sorry, guys. You're hearing me yawn. Oh. Uh, some sort of uh, other man weakening the silver suit. Uh, the odd-shaped being teleports himself into the throne throne room. He had been recap recap re recap. Re Recuperating, recuperating his power while making plans alongside his mysterious ally friend, who ha who so happens to be sitting on a wooden chair looking out of a window. It's hard to read anything with that strange mask of some sort of other man and wearing a silver suit. I have to admit. I sometimes feel weary about you, M," said Discord. M didn't look away from the window, sitting still, very calmly. You are, you are wise to think that, my lord Discord. I once thought to trust others until I learned the hard fact of reality, and the sacrifices that must be made in order to keep my keep walking down the path that we wish to not not to deter from however in situations of revenge setbacks must be made to accomplish that said M slowly standing up and turning towards his superior discord snorts a little and lays down on his throne true but I don't but it doesn't mean I have to trust you even after everything you've done you're doing to help me. M nods a little bit and slowly walks forward again. A what? Again, a wise thought. And for my part, and all of this is the human living amongst the ponies. That I is my goal. Uh, is that human living against amongst the ponies? That is my goal. Why is why is he my goal? Let's just say it's complicated. My answers shall be clear once we advance our plan. Shall we begin, Lord Discord? Hmm. I like your style. Guards, bring them in, shouts Discord, and his fingers click, making the doors open. As the door opened at a slow speed, they noticed three familiar figures walking into Discord's throne room. Of course, it would be a crime if they didn't think of the great and powerful Trixie. Ugh, gag! And she proudly strode through the, with her head held high. Ugh. Instead of wearing her usual 
attire. She now wears the dark cloaks, black cape, and hood. The unicorn smirks proudly and bows graciously. The great and powerful Trixie is ready to serve, as long as I have my revenge. Dag. Sorry, doing her voice just leaves a nasty feeling in my mouth. I mean, sure, she's reformed and all in the previous seasons, but... Still didn't like it. She's still a cocky little bugger. Didn't like it one bit. Not one bit. The man looked at her intensely. That's good to hear. I've, I've been watching your train. Your training in the dark areas of magic, and it seems the dark walkers have. Ah, that's a question. Tell me, why? Why does the name of this origin organi organization keep changing everything single time? They were called the Dark Cloaks, Dark Mages, and Trixie cuts them off, ruddily, but. But in turns, so does he. Rude. Shut up! You're going to get. You don't get the to know that reason. He growls softly, making the blue pony shudder. Mm. Discord noticed noticed a, a female Griffin, Lady Tara, walk steadily onto steadily into his throne room. Also, but wearing pieces of armor on her chest, torso, her coat co color is a dark red, which is final, finely groomed. Her hair is uh, is spiky and white, with some red on the tips, and the eyes are piercing red color. Ooh, spooky! And watches Tara bow her head slightly towards discord and almost ignores M. Lady Tara, how good to see you again. Trust that you've been doing been working hard on recruiting more griffins for our cause. Lady Tara glanced at the man, but looked back at Discord. Yes, I was able to recruit more, which made a com company of a hundred griffins. All are experienced outcast and seek glory. Mother of Betsy, help us now. M slowly walked up to Tara with his mask near her. Face staring down at her confident eyes, which slowly moved up to meet his M's mask. Remember, Lady Tara, their glory is within service. Wait, who's talking? Uh, within service of Lord Discord. Okay, yeah, miss. If it comes to to questions about our loyalty, I will personally arrange that issue. Just never forget. That he has given your your lives a purpose to fight and live on. If you want to make an uprising against the current Griffin Council, now you know your place here. Understood? He said firmly. The female Griffin simply lock, locks her eyes into his scowless eyes. So. Wait, what? I sockets. Okay. Loud and clear, she said. Mm, this is going to end badly. I can feel it in my belly. Anyway. <laughs> Suddenly, a loud crash is heard outside the throne room in the hallway, along with shouting and fighting. Trixie turns around, looking frightened as a as a rabbit. As a mm. Tara paid no attention to the commotion. In a way, she feels it's unworthy. Talk 
fucking notes. Discord laughs slightly already foreseeing what is happening, not reading the issue or simply powers. Oh my, that must be an tearing speed. Intrigue, er haven't one of the, his anger fits. Take cover and find some popcorn, he says with glee. Oh, j boy. A large diamond dog with red eyes and armor over his body growls loudly with stomping into the throne room and glares at everyone. This better be good. I'm sick and tired of waiting around. The man walks over to a trig, hands in pockets. Calm yourself, Etrig. Midnight is when we move out. Etrig looked at M with a slight hint of joy, but not quite sure if he wants to show that. This midnight, finally, my revenge will be complete, he roars. Uh, I hate to burst your bubble, but that's not the human you're talking about. Oof. If only he knew. Trix looked at Trixie looked at the diamond dog, wondering who he was growling about. After all these days, decided to have some courage. The unicorn stands straight. Sir Etrig, I'm curious, who exactly is this being you want to want so badly for revenge? The diamond dog glares fiercely at a tiny, at a teeny pony, little pony. What? Haven't I told you since we met? Bah! And like you're any different wanting revenge, all I want is to kill the human who has returned me me many years ago. Kirk the hu of huma humanity. Kirk? Wait, but I remember reading a newspaper sh about a human falling from the sky, and this his name was Trixie Pounding. Ponders. Atrix slams his fist into the ground next to her, causing Trixie to shriek. It is Kirk! I it I will not Enough The man yells out so loudly that even Mountain trembles slightly. <laughs> Everyone, including Discord, who was having a time of his life, watches all this and Lady Tara, slightly surprised to hear the man shout. Em adjusts his fine suit. <clears throat> now that we have our divine attention it is time to assemble the plan and rouse the troop and rouse the troops for war discord snaps his fingers and appears with everyone from the throne room in a hill on a hill now my subjects observe they all look down from the hill to see three large groups Separated by their species, as promised from Lady Tara, they are a hundred um, arm, armored griffins in immaculate amounts, ready for battle, and bows to discord, but deep down to Lady Tara. Tonight we shall show our might for Lord Discord, and prove that we are the true griffins to rule the griffin council, and seek glory once more. The man looks at Discord, wondering that Discord thinks of her choice of words. His greatness simply smirks and nods to let her off. In fact, it only made the griffins have more will to fight more. But when it is Itrick's turn to make make a rousing and inspiring speech that will even make the all Diamond Dogs shed a tear. Diamond Dogs, smash the ponies! Break Kirk! He roars. Discord snorts, covering his mouth, and looks at M, almost fa fainting. Maybe we thought too much of Itrick. Itrick, my bad. The man silently shakes his head in disbelief. Oh, it's Discord's. Maybe we thought too much of Etrick. Sorry, I that was Discord's line. My bad. The man silently shakes his head in disbelief, but calmly walks over to the cliff with Discord as they 
look over the griffin. I'm so sorry, guys. The griffin, diamond dogs, and the dark walkers all ready and prepared to move out in on Discord's command. And that's just what he'll do. All of you are ready to sacrifice yourselves for me. Tonight, we will be a day unlike anything you all have ever witnessed. It shall be the great demise of Celestia and Luna. Equestria shall fall into my palms, and I will be supreme ruler of this land. And of course, you all will have your reward for you for your noble effort just come back alive don't fret if you can't at least die trying his voice boomed across the area he quite earning roars and cheer cries of battle for battle bum, bum, bum. the man goes next to his leader and whispers lord lord discord i have been informed that the device are Devices are ready for the move out when midnight strikes. Discord, wait, what devices? Discord smiles to himself. Marvelous. I guess I better make my own cheesy spread. Cheesy speech. Oh boy. The odd figure slowly walks toward towards the cliff, head, head held high and hands behind his back. He tr stops and stares down at the subjects. For too long have we all been oppressed by the beloved rulers of Equestria, for they saw you all and me as beings of mischief and bad people. Tonight shall be our victory day, as the ponies will finally see the true power of our wrath. Show them that you all never forget, for when we win the battle, all of you wildest desires and dreams shall come true. Of course, a few may perish if something goes wrong, but sacrifices are made for the best. Be prepared to move and show no hesitation. Everyone cheers and cries out for battle, being fueled by discord, somewhat in inspirational speech. They slowly start to march toward their distinct distant distant location sorry I had to think about that real quick for attack and waiting for the com command the man in discord watched them march off along with Tara Etrick and Trixie but M walked around discord slowly you know you you know you can't trust them especially Tara and Etrick he said. Discord simply snorts. Trust them? Ha! Since when have they earned the right to even be acknowledged in my contest thoughts? Constant thoughts. Etrick and Tara hate me, but no, this is their opportunity to achieve their goals. But this is, is a once-in-a-lifetime chance. They'll chance they'll ever get even if they betray me it'll all be too late for them yikes so discord was planning to backstab him in any way oof talk about a faithful leader oof m chuckles at the speech we too have we too have to be ready to set off, shall we, Lord Discord? He says, motioning Discord to follow. Bum, bum, bum! Okay, guys, this is going to be pretty nutty. Pretty nutty, if I think so, if I do say so myself. Uh, let's see. Meanwhile, Equestria, unknown, again. After hours of training with spirit, Joseph Brooklyn and Spike Sparkle are staring. I'm sorry, Spike Sparkle. I'm over right now, surprisingly. That's me still being sleepy, or that's just, I don't know. I got used to it. Maybe, I don't know. Anyway. 
Smack Sparkle are starting to remember their training from all those months ago in the land of Angster. Okay, seriously, how long have they been stuck there for? It's first a week, it's first a few days, then a week, then two weeks, and then all of a sudden, a month, and now all of a sudden, MONTHS! Hence the S at the end of MONTHS! Seriously! Uh, oh, sorry guys, stretching attack, stretch attacks me. Seriously though, how long have Joseph even been there for? Do they even have any ways to keep track of dates? I mean, come on! And like this show, it's like a, it's like one event happens like in like in like a few days or a short time. Blech. And you know, like the Apple Family Reunion episode where Applejack made you know everything not very fun through that reunion and breaks the barn. So. Is there like one of them times? I don't know. I mean, honestly, no concept of time in that, in that, um, in that show, really. And then again, I have no concept of time much, really, either. So, meh, whatever. Okay, the times they spent falling at the bars. After hours of training with spirit, Joseph Brooklyn and Spike Brooklyn are training to remember their training from all those months ago in the land of Zenther. The correct stance, style, breathing, and concentration. The times they spent falling at the spars. Falling off the obstacle course, but eventually, finally, their place Joe is doing, doing pull-ups on an iron bar in a stone doorway only wearing his black jeans and shoes. The human feels the sweat dripping off his face and body, burning feelings in the, in his, in the muscles. Even after a few hours of training, he held strong, but his mind is telling him to stop. The, but pain was something that has to be ignored. Oof. This was nothing being beaten to death and mentally hurt is much more than training. Joseph Brooklyn grits his teeth together, still still doing the pull-ups. I can't do this. I remember now. Master Yang, Chardana, Miku, they all helped me become something better. If Kirk had to endure the pain longer than me, so can I. I won't let my friends down, and I swear by my own life that I stop Discord's evil schemes. He thought with determination. Spike is part practicing his combat skills against Spirit, throwing a pro project, uh, projectile objects at the Gem Dragon using the extend pole that he was given as a gift. Spike remembers the technique he uses to train and against the Diamond Dogs a while ago. Swiftly, like lightning speed. Spike does a flurry of moves that knock away the projectiles of dodging or dodging them, making the large unicorn smirk in approval. Wait, that unicorn can smile? <gasps> what? I thought that was physically impossible. The little dime the little dragon ponders for a moment everything I've done I done for the attention of being loved by twat. Like Joe, everyone, even Rarity. I made my own choice to believe in my brother, a good man. I will fight only, not only to protect the ones I love, but to do something right. And this is right. Hoorah! <laughs> Sorry, I added that hoorah. My bad. Spirit continues to observe the two training it. It was incredible. They never stopped training, if only for a sip of water. Belief of trying to protect they can care about or to stop Discord and this mysterious M person to spirit. It was all he could ask for. As long as those two have something worth fighting for, then what they're all doing is worth it. He just hoped it won't go to waste. If something happened to them, the unicorn chuckles. F fascinating. This this brings back memories from training in Zenther for 
for months. Gagan, Gagan, I don't know how to say it. Gagan trained so hard to break Kirk, but failed at me. And me? I don't like bragging, but that walrus lady. She got me a few times, but I snagged it. Except when she landed on my fist first time. Ugh, that hurt. But my reasons were all re revenge for my parents' death and to this scar that which gave to which gave to me he thinks feeling the black scar on his left eye oof spirit stomps his hoof and shouts and shouts enough joseph and spike immediately stopped what they are doing in and, and jogged over to the white unicorn who is sternly looking at them seeing their sweat and tired out faces all right, you two need re you two need rest. Now I can't have you entering battlefield tri tired in pain from all of this. Spike zooms over to a towel stand and gives one to Joe, both rubbing their faces. Thank you, General. General Spirit not ponders something and looks to his left, staring at some large wooden doors. Follow me and Brooklyn. Get your shirt back. Get your shirt back on. Joe blushes faintly and run <laughs> and runs over to get his t-shirt, while Spike fo follows Spear to the door. The dragon snorts. What is it with oversized doors? I know, right? What is it with all the oversized freaking doors? Honestly, I find that annoying. Sure, it's supposed to be uh, supposed to be fancy and professional, but seriously, is it a little like, extreme to put, oh, I don't know, random, oversized doors in a weird place? Speaking of which, where the hell are they? Anyway, unicorn horn glows a bit, making loud clinking noise sounds and chains, moving the doors very slowly inward. Joe ran back to them and gasped at the win wooden door. <sighs> oh, excuse moi. Almost as thick as an oak tree, but spirit said, but spirit said nothing as he strides into a decently big room with marble flooring, light blue marble walls, and the ceiling is also marble, but with square tiles that has color from each of the rainbow. The lamp. The lamp being hanging onto the ceiling is bright. The lamp hanging from the ceiling is bright as a stone light bulb. All of this makes the odd do stares around in absolute awe. But that really caught their attention in is that the wall had some square shaped hole. About three of them had some sort of special cushions and arms rest. The general walked over to a hole under the wall, which happens to be the one in front. Uh, in front, you see, as you all walk in with gray cushions, and he uses his magic to pull metal trays out. Uh, out, all contain a teapot and some car cranberry juice and some biscuits. So it's an oversized kitchen. Weird. Sit, both of you, said Spirit. <laughs> Joe and Spike slowly walked over to the ho holes in the wall and sat down a few inches away from each other. It's Spirit, but still in good view. He here in range. Both of them felt comfortable in their seats and looked towards their mentor, who looked at the duo. These belonged to me, Kirk, and Chariot. The human is in Kirk's seat, and the dragon is sitting in Chariot's seat. The human gasped, almost jumping out. I sitting in in his seat? <laughs> okay. Spirit raises a hoof in resentment. Stop that! I gave you orders to sit down, and you're not trespassing. 
the reason why I brought you all in here is is talk in his room specifically so that you feel what us three had to do many years ago. This used to be my father's private quarters until I was burned, burnt down by the witch. But Kirk helped me rebuild this place later on with chariots help too. This is the room where we all hanged out, walking, walked about, talked about life in general, having laughs, two serious conversations about ev events going on in Equestria, and what we had to do to prevent them from happening. But the main goal was to destroy the witch. Spike looked towards the pony, leaning in his seat. But why are are but why are we here still Spira looked towards him Joseph Brooklyn reminds me of Kirk not only being a human but for having the same amount of courage and determination you in chariot's chair is because you're smart than you actually think one day you are going to be the smartest dragon alive Praise from the guy who has a scar and makes uh, and scares them half to death. Interesting. Joe and Spike didn't know what to say, so Spirit decided to tell them something more information for their long curiosity. Spike, remember when you heard that a gem dragon trained in Zenther? The gem dragon looked at him in the tree from from not hearing about this for quite some time. Yeah, his name was Razor, if I remember right. Spare nods with acknowledgement. Yes. When we and when me and Kurt first arrived in Zenther to train, Razor was there training as well. It was actually by accident that we met him. I, I kicked his leg once thinking I was hitting a target. He says with a Big grin in <laughs> at the end. He's, he suddenly roars in pain and he, we begin brawling like children. Kirk tries his best to break up the fight until Car Chardonia did so. But we ac actually bonded with each other after that became. Because Razor saw something in our eyes, stirring starving for revenge because he was banished from the dragonlands back then the families were having massive disputes and waged war on each other to claim rights over the lands razor has one of the few who tried to stop it all by disgust until this clan until his clan leader thought them as weaklings with no place in the dragonlands and so he was cast away as a teenager finding some shelter in xenther wolf spike looked on his intent interest what happened to the rest of the gem dragons and to razor spike looked at the colorful ceiling after after our training was done razor went on to the to to roam roam the world seeking new ways to find his inner dragon but i remember when fighting the witch razor out of nowhere assisted me and kirk in battle and after that razor thought he was good enough to return to his land and seek out his people and for about the gem dragon dragons i have no idea last time i heard he thought about it was that our, your race was dying out and once of the reason to seek mates the little gem dragon rubs his forehead in deep thought my race dying out you know i never actually thought of that but then again uh spike eats most dragons eat gem anyway so I mean, come on, it's perfectly natural. Have you seen the show? Spike eats nothing but gems most of the times. Anyway.
Joseph gives a look, a look of sadness to Swag, hoping he wasn't the last gem dragon around. And if you didn't mind me asking, what about Kirk? General Spare gives a long look at Joe, a question that never left his thought, even since the Galloping Gala meeting. Uh, yes. I said I would tell you more about him. of him. Well, he was from Earth, obviously, and around the age of 16, he was a mysterious teleported to Equestria by the witch for some reason. Kirk was, how do I put it, was not like you, bursting with confidence and cockiness, always looking to join a worthy fight to pass time, and had some manner issues. Ha, <laughs> ha. But deep down, he cared what went on with good people's lives and tried his best to make them feel better. Like me, helping recover from my home and family, being destroyed. However, since Kirk met Chariot, things changed so much. Spike and Joe looked at each other in curiosity. Like what? Spike asked. Chariot was, Chariot was like a beacon of hope for Kirk. She took a great interest in Kirk because you know him being human, but that dog, Spirit Smirks, he loved her personality, being kind at, but strict due to her job being Celestia's assistant at the time. They always talked about everything together. It almost got a point where they were falling for each other, he says. Joe leans forward, hands together. And what happens to that? Happened to them. Spare looked down and drank some tea. During the battle against the witch, Cheria thought he won the battle on the field of Ponyville, but the witch noticed her and struck her down. Oof. Kirk went berserk, and he charged at her. To which she teleported him and herself to a cliff. The odd duo listened instantly at Spirit's story of the battle Spirit sighs more and continued all. All Kirk told me was that she died from falling, which loses to mo much anger from their battle, and met her demise at the rocky bottom. Kirk returned, and we mourned the death of Chariot, and she left, and she left Kirk a special spell that teleported him back to Earth, and that's what happened. We said our goodbyes, and I thanked him from the bottom of my heart for all he done for me, being there not only to stop the witch, but also being my best friend. Spike leans back in awe. That's quite something, spirit. You all went through a lot. Just a Brooklyn is now is looking down at the fl floor but but you're but you're still not telling the whole details of the event are you the large unicorn stares at the young human and grunts if i did we'd be here all day and that is not what we're here for you you got your information and you better be damned happy about it but there there, there's a battle coming, and we have to get ready. Joe rubs his face in frustration. He wants to know more about Kirk's past. Me too, for crying out loud! And Speg knows so much more, but he's right. There is, there is battle coming very soon, and midnight is only three hours away. All right, where do we start? Spirit stands up and smiles. Before we head out, I have something to give you. Follow me. A gift? Hmm, I wonder what it is. Let's see. Meanwhile, in Quastriot, Canterlot. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Okay, why the girl? None of the girls have showed up yet is because they're still missing. Yes, I even went to go fight changelings, but they moved them somewhere, so I'm starring Equestria. And I will find out. And when I find those changelings who did it, they'll get a nasty meeting with the pointy end of my daggers. 
and my fist. The nasty end of my fist, me breaking their, their exoskeleton bodies into bits. <sighs> Too much. Anyway, Princess Celestia is looking out of her balcony, staring. Oh, it's Celestia this time. Staring at some guards walking around the training ground, preparing themselves to move out when they have their orders. Celestia quickly turns around and walks into a meeting room. <sighs> Excuse me. Any news on the location of on the whereabouts of Discord and the man? I can't take the, that guy seriously. Seriously, the man? What the hell is the name? Hmm, something about the man, though, makes me curious about stuff. She asks politely. An old pony with a long beard shakes his head shamefully. I am sorry, you're my princess. Even our best scouts in all of Equestria can't find their whereabouts. Or these armies who he somehow formed against us. But I do have something information that we may have some sort of device of sort that may use. Celestia gives him a curious look. Device? What are we talking about here, Lore, Lore Walker? Lore Walker? Lore Walker. Is that even a thing? Is that seriously a thing? Lore Walker? Is that really a name? Lore Walker. Okay. Lore Walker shivers and n mumbles. To Lore Walker. See, what? Where'd you pull that name out of? Out of the lore book? <laughs> Yes, I might be funny. <laughs> Shivers and mumbles to himself. I am not entirely sure what they are capable of, or if it's just scare tactics. But from General Spirit's intelligence, they may be dra draining magic energy in four locations in Equestria. Huh? Luna suddenly floats in and lands next to Princess Celestia. I am here, sister, and I have heard your lord heard you, Lord Walker. Please continue. <laughs> Sorry, can't take <gasps> I can't take that name seriously. Lore Walker <laughs> Well obviously that guy likes a lot of Lord fairy tale. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was cheesy, I know. Um. Uh, Luna suddenly floats in and lands next to Prince. Uh, oh, wait, I already read that. I am afraid that all the information we can understand at this point, we all, all we can do is have spirit soldiers stand on guard. <sighs> <laughs> oh, excuse me, my bad. In our cities, until then, all we can do is wait for the attack. Celestia, Celestia looked, looks at her hooves, then to Luna. Dear sister, Spirit has been hiding some information. Why is that his soldiers found this information while we didn't? If he told us that he felt something wrong, something wrong is going on. Princess Luna gently puts her hoof on Celestia's mouth. Tia, do not jump to conclusions. He must have his reasons. He never betrayed us. He is absolutely loyal to you. The Princess of the Sun sighs deeply. Thinking back to the days when Spirit was little and how much he adored her when she visits his parents' mansion, they were really good ponies to her. But after the house caught fire, the young Spirit changed forever, brooding and serious. I know, it's just... I will have words whenever I see General Spirit, said Celestia. Spirit's going to get a scolding! Nah, 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 nah. 
Lula smiled, nuzzling her sister's neck. Don't worry, we're in this together. Even if we lose the this battle, dear sister, I will never leave you again. Aww. Sisterly love. Squish. Celestia hugs her smaller sister close, hoping things will come out sat eat in the end, but deep down she knew this was going to be a very, very different conflict. If Discord is being serious with his plan and the new directions for taking Questria through high violence, all she could ask for her little po ponies is to be is to be who they walked were to uh where be the there for each other and use their abilities for def defense of m my little ponies stay strong for the upcoming battle i swear you all will not you will not be alone she thinks to herself the princess of the moon looks over to celestia motioning to follow come tia we need to contain our search for discord and m Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> ooh, ooh, I'm almost done, guys. Almost done. Equestria, unknown. Back to Spirit Spike and Joseph. Whoa. Spirit Spike and Joseph walking. <clears throat> you see what I did there? <laughs> anyway, uh, walk down a hallway. They. S <laughs> They see the entrance uh, to a chamber. Beyond the pair of worn statues lies a small worn room. It's covered in is pieces from around Equestria and Zinther. Torches still burned after many years of being lit. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all know what we're thinking this is all about. <gasps> magic, magic, magic. Oh, God damn it! I did it! Ugh. Beyond the pair of worn statues lies a small worn room. It's covered in blah 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 blah. Being lit, given the room great lighting, they see pillars p holding the ceiling. Spike and Joe once again stares in the in awe. Uh. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Giving room light to the underground uh, pillars holding the ceiling. Spike and Joe once again staring uh, at the underground base. Clearly, Kirk, Chariot, Chariot, and Spirit spend a lot of time and dedication down here. But Joe noticed something hanging on a wall that the light is beaming upon a set of armor. Spirit noticed Joe's gaze. That there was Kirk's armor when we went around Equestria and finally fought with with the witch. The shoulders are point pointy, quite narrow, narrow and huge. They're they're decorate decorated with a row of metal feathers, all pointed upward. The r row wretches from side to side, and the upper arm. Arms are protected by rounded, half covering rear re re brace. But I don't know what that is. Okay. Which suit will under the skull shoulder plates? The low arms are covered by breast. <sighs> Sorry, I can't read some of these words. My bad. The breastplate is made from many layers of round metal bottom and the upper legs are covered by oh <laughs> um so do -do. um crap lost my spot it covered almost everything from the neck down and ending it at the groin oof but the sides are 
are only covered near the bottom, and the upper legs are covered by rounded half cover causes. Lower legs are protected by gra graves which have rows upon rows of small metal pieces mimicking fish scales. Spike's jaw nearly dropped and stared at Spirit. D Dude, how did Kirk get this? He shouts. This was made in Zenther by a blacksmith, northeast from the country, where it's more common to find metals in that region. It was a gift from Cardonia because Kirk, even with attitude and bad manners, he was honorable towards Miku's father. Uh, ba 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 ba, father. Gregan and fought every very well. We spent nearly a year of our lives there. We both matured a bit. Matured a bit. Joseph walked up to the armor set on, touched the boots. So why are we here? He asked. Spirit motioned to the armor again because I want you to wear this armor. Come again? The boy sh staggers a bit in total shock. What? But I can't, and w I wouldn't. It would not fit. Joseph Brooklyn, listen to me. This is a battle that will happen very soon if we're ready to fight and defend our bodies. Might as well dig our graves for the enemy. And I personally believe you are worthy of putting it on," said Spirit, using his magic to take the armor down and hand them to Joe. And hands them to. Joe, oh god, whatever. Joe didn't know what to say. He is going to wear the legendary and first human in Equestria armor. Part of him felt ashamed to wear it, since Kirk went through much, much more than Joseph. In training time in Zenther, the Equestria plus losing chi chariot of. However, it spirits believe in him and thinks he is worth the enough wearing this armor. How can he refuse? Okay, I'll wear it. This I'll wear this. Can I change somewhere? Spare rolls his eyes and and a face hoof. Really? There's two males here and ugh door on the left and make make it quick. <laughs> oh, Joseph <sighs> oof, 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 oof. Yeah, it was first the changing in front of everyone in Zenther, and now this. Talk about... Talk about embarrassing. He shouts, make sh making Joseph run towards the room. The little gem dragon snickers to himself and looks up to the general. And me? Spirit looks down and smirks. I almost forgot. Here is a helmet and a metal skirt. <laughs> if you two wear it, it's that corner. He points Spike Sparkle, looks blankly at the corner and sh shakes his head. Yeah, I think I'll just go as I am, thanks. <laughs> About nearly ten minutes, Joseph Brooklyn walks out, out wearing the armor and once it once belonged to Kirk. The boy adjusted everything to ensure it it's on and comfortable. Spirit makes a sigh of relief. The armor fits snug as if it was for the boy. Kirk, you should be proud. Hmm. The Gen Dragon couldn't make looks amazed at Joe's transformation and grins in glee. Dude, you look awesome! Like a real warrior. Joe blushes slightly. What? Thanks, Spike. Spike snorts and then points to a wall. Boy, run over to that wall. Huh? Why? Because I think it's funny and I can't say so. Run, run to the wall, Spirit shouts. <laughs> Joseph groans loudly at Spike's at Spirit's demand and pointless comment.
but this is his home and actually giving Spike and Joe a lot of his respect and trust. So best not to trend on him. Yeah, you think? And and so the human in in new armor state starts running to the other side of the wall. However, as Spirit watches Joe running, things suddenly went into into slow motion as Joe ran past a pillar. He changed the he changed the unicorn's eyes wide and gasped softly, seeing Kirk slowly running toward the wall. His hair is is spiky and mess messier some hair in his jaw hair on his jaw spirit didn't know what to do he is seeing his old friend running but as soon as he ran past another pillar the vision of kirk turned to joseph in the armor general spirit blinks and rubs his eyes kirk spike did you see him huh spike looked at spirit strangely um no, you feeling okay, dude? The large unicorn stands with utter shock, seeing a vision of a long time. I mean, best friend running across the room. Spirit slowly smiles and laughs. <sighs> it seems that Kirk and Joe are almost the same. I think the secret, no, the guardians of Equestria is reborn for this occasion. Hmm, not a bad title. I like it. Joseph Brooklyn runs back towards Spare with hands on hips. Okay, I done as he's asked, sir. Anything else I should be doing? Spare grins widely and pats Joe and Spike ahead. You two are coming with me. You got a battle to win. He stomps out with pride. Joseph and Spike looks at each other very confused. Yeah, I'm confused. Uh... Joseph and Spike looked at each other, very confused, a general personality, Holt, Spike, and, okay, sorry guys, my dad told me I had to clean up and stuff, so I'll try to finish this as best as I can. Uh, spare motion for the odd duo to hope on his back and begin talking to them. Okay, listen up. I've been doing my research on what Discord is planning on doing. My space and scouts have told me they're causing some sort of are using some sort of device. Spike holds on into Spirit's greasy mane. W wait, where are we going? Where where are we going? He says. Spirit grunts out on out. We're going to Ponyville. Joseph's here. Heartbeats increase. Body feeling cold. He cannot. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, basically, uh, at this part, um, Uh, basically, they're going back to Ponyville, and Joseph's like chickening out again. Anyway, the pony, the human smiles and kisses at the top of Spike's head. Spike, thanks you so much. You're the, and Spike giving a lecture or anything. Apparently, uh, sorry, I'm trying to curry this up so my dad doesn't yell at me. Ugh. Meanwhile, back on Earth in a uh, New York City. Oh, good. Gray Brooklyn is walking into a Central Park, looking like. Life is all but lost for the man. He looks around, seeing the heavy rain and dark clouds creating massive loud thunder. I'm so sorry, Joseph. If only I was better father for you, he shouts. Greg fills his mobile phone ring hesitantly. He grabs it out of his pocket and answers, Hello? Greg, thank God I haven't heard from you in ages. You weren't answering the phone or responding to my emails. It's Frank. Greg or Frank friend since he joined the business career and last seen each other after they got got taxis frank i'm so sorry but everything gives has given up on searching for my son i'm looking for him but there is nothing nothing frank i'm failed my son what have i become i thought i could have done so much good so good and raised a loving family until my father i've become just like him Greg burst out, letting all of the emotions out of his he's being holding in for so long. Frank as stammers and tries to get sense into his friend. G Gregory, please what why are you I I'll come get you and we can take talk to each other. Gregory talks, fails into his knees and tears stream down his face. 
I'm in Central Park, Sheep Meadow. Okay, just got got to go to Tavern on the Green, and I'll meet you there. If you want want to eat something, I'll pay for you. Just please, please don't do anything to yourself. Promise me, Frank begs. Gregory Brooklyn looks slow, slowly stands up and clenches his fist, sniffing and sobbing softly. S sure. Suddenly, he hears a tiny crack and lights gently enveloping around him, feeling warm and sheltered from the rain, making the sound sound of wind blowing slowly become being high and higher in pitch. Greg gasped in shock, looking, "What? What? What was going on?" Greg, Gregory, Greg, what's happening? Frank shouts over the phone, hearing the noises and his friend's voice. Greg accidentally drops the phone and feels himself being lifted up, the light starting to suck his body into an unsearchable void. The sensation is like losing pieces of himself. With one last effort, he manages to scream out Aah! before disappearing into the air. Aliens! <laughs> and all and all he could see is darkness. Greg wonders if he just died from that, from only touching this crystal. This all happened, but suddenly the memories appeared like yesterday. Gregory's eyes shot open and doesn't feel he feel hear and see any rain. Only fields that doesn't match Central Park at all. Looking around, he noticed the gra grass is greener than anything he had ever seen before. The wind is fresh and pure, and noticed a lake that is clear as day. Gregory quite re realizes something runs up a steep hill. His heart races with each step he takes, and when the human finally reaches the top, his heart skips a beat and sees a castle in the sit distance. A tear drops from his face. Gregory whispers softly, Equestria. <gasps> whoa, whoa! Howdy! How does he- <gasps> Is his, is his grand, is his dad like, <gasps> okay, now I'm curious, uh, sorry it was a rush for you guys, my dad's probably going to kill me right now, but, uh, thanks for, if you want to read more, click on the description down below, um, I'll upload everything as soon as possible, bye, this is Funky Luffy signing out, stay tuned!